You may find it very stupid and illogical to install a jet engine on a tanker, but if you watch this video, you will see that it's not such a stupid idea, it's even a logical idea in places. Don't you believe? Then keep watching. Today we go back to the Cold War years, yes, we're going back to the 20th century. As you know, there was a tremendous tension between NATO and the Warsaw Pact at this time. Both sides were giving blank checks to all kinds of madness to get the upper hand. Thus, the mid 20th century was a time when the craziest, most absurd project on military technology was emerging. Today I'm going to talk about a tank, but this tank is a very different one from the other tanks you may know, because this is a jet engine tank and the purpose of this jet engine is not to make the tank fly or move it too fast, but to destroy the mines. The world's first and only jet powered tank, Progress TI. Program started designing in the 60s and it first appeared in the 80s and it had a very interesting fate. How did this tank come about? Who came up with the idea to put a jet engine on a tank? Apart from that, I will try to talk about the technical features using a very small amount of information about this vehicle. Why was this tank never produced? I will try to answer that question. An exciting, entertaining video full of information is awaiting for you. Get ready. Let's start. During the Cold War years, both sides were expecting a very violent Third World War, and during this war, all kinds of crazy projects were invested in, order to prevent the other side and make an effective attack on the other side. One of the most serious problems between the two sides was the mines. Mines had indeed become a very serious threat to the world, especially after the Second World War. It made large areas impassable. It was ideal for defense, but for the attacking side, the mines were a really serious problem. For the Soviet Union, which relied on tens of thousands of tanks and armored vehicles in a possible Third World War, mines were a very serious and meaningful threat, and they had to be destroyed as quickly and as safely as possible. It was necessary that the tanks and ground troops could easily come to NATO territory. That's why the Soviets did a very important work on the mine destroyers in the 50s and 60s. They also invested in some crazy projects. In this period, in the 1970s, the program belonged to the THY, some serious work had begun to emerge. We don't know who first came up with the idea to put a jet engine on a tank. Similar studies were seen in the West after World War II. It is used to say that the British and Americans tried crazy ideas such as destroying some mines using jet engines, but gave up. In the late 1970s, this idea resurfaced on the Soviet side, because the Soviets had been using jet engines and land vehicles for a while. In the 1960s, when the weight of the MiG-21 in the Soviet Air Force began to increase, aircraft such as MiG-15 naturally began to withdraw from service. However, this type of aircraft is not sent to razor factories immediately after it's withdrawn from service. Everything else from them is highly appreciated. These planes are stored in nets who can't evaluate. After the services were withdrawn, a lot of lemon brown engines were left ideal, and the Soviets were evaluating the engines in a very interesting way. Especially these engines were very useful in airports in the eastern part of Siberia, where the climatic conditions are very harsh. Since the 60s, the Soviets started to use these VK-1 engines, which were left over from MiG-15, for the purpose of cleaning the runway. Here, the jet engines literally run like hairdryer. The engines are running the high-intensity hot gases that come out, melt the snow and ice, clean the asphalt from the dirt. The idea of using these old jet engines as blow dryers started to confuse someone in Moscow in the 70s. Somebody wonder if we can use this technology to destroy mines. He started to think. At the end of the 1970s, the park project began. When the jet engines are used on land, they create very serious shock waves, and they also create very serious sound waves. These severe shock waves could activate mines under the ground, 
showed that a lot of mines could be easily destroyed at once. The idea made sense, that's why some prototype work began in the late 1970s. In the first place, it was decided to use the existing product instead of making a brand new design from scratch. The T-34 was originally intended as a carrier vehicle, but since there were not enough T-34s in Soviet warehouses, it was decided to choose another vehicle, because if the project was successful, the Soviets would want plenty of these vehicles and there had to be plenty of confidence ready for mass production immediately. Fortunately, the Soviets had plenty of old generation 54 tanks in their warehouses. At the time, the Soviets had modified most of the 54s to experience, but there were still thousands of T-44s in storage. The engine part was easier because, again, hundreds or even thousands of air conditioners and grave engines were stored in Soviet warehouses. As I said, some of these engines were disabandoned in Siberia. Because there is very little information about this project, and those very few sources all mention differential numbers. That's why I have to go on average figures. Reports on the prototype model Progress T have been mixed. Some like the tool very much, consider it very effective. For some, this vehicle is a complete disaster. The Kremlin administration decides to test it in the field before making its final decision on the vehicle. Thus, they sent it to Afghanistan in 1981 and even in 1982. Now, before we get into Afghanistan adventures of Progress T, let's get into some technical features of this vehicle. The Progress T was actually converted from an old T-54 tank. The trend part of this vehicle was removed, the ammo section below were emptied and a twin engine was added to it. This jet engine, as I have just said, is the air conditioner production VK used in MiG-15 aircraft. In order to start the engine, a kerosene tank was added to the back of the tank. With a fuel tank added, this tank can hold 4.5 tons of kerosene, but only 1 ton of kerosene is added to be safe. The maximum weight of this vehicle in this state is 37 tons. The loud shock waves and sound waves generated by the engine detonate mines buried up to 20 cm deep within the range of 12 meters. It can be extended of course, added to the front of the vehicle. When we use this wing system, it is a vehicle that detonates mines in the sea up to half a meter. This vehicle which is claimed to be 90% effective on the field can travel at a maximum speed of 3 km per hour. Because when it burns faster, the jet engine's mine destroyer tablet drops seriously. Therefore, the vehicle moves very slowly. Its range is also extremely short. This vehicle can only travel in a range of two and a half hours on a tank of fuel. That's a maximum of seven and a half, about eight kilometers. I said that the effective range of this engine at maximum power is 12 meters. At the same time, the width varies between 7 and 9 meters. Now, after talking about a few technical features we have in hand, let's move on to our Prague and Afghanistan adventures. It is indeed very difficult to find information about the adventures of progress in Afghanistan. I had to search a lot, and I had to dig a lot, but I found something very interesting. I came across an interview with the tank commander who tested this vehicle in Afghanistan when it was used and this tank commander was not saying anything good about the vehicle. According to the commander who tested this vehicle in Afghanistan, the program was a terrible tool. He heard a terrible noise even from a distance of 10, 12 or even 15 kilometers. The sound of this vehicle can be heard very clearly, and he even named this vehicle as the Mujahid whistle or something alike. Also many complaints about it, those who used the chiller tank also complained terribly about its noise. Apart from that, the vehicle was not as reliable as it was thought to be in the field. Yes, in Moscow, he could destroy 90% of the mines, but in Afghanistan, the conditions were much different. In short, this tool was tried in Afghanistan and failed. It was very noisy, consuming too much fuel, and it could not destroy as many mines as claimed. 
the effectiveness of the difficult train was seriously decreasing. Therefore, a very negative report was sent from Afghanistan to Moscow, and the project was cancelled as a result of these reports. According to the interviewed commander, the vehicle was not even taken back to Moscow. Currently, the only prototype of the Program T is left to rot. The idea of destroying mines using a jet engine may seem very interesting and logical to you at first, but when you put this theory into practice, you face serious problems. First of all, the engines do not run as safely as you would like. They consume a lot of fuel and make incredible noise. For these reasons, the program was never made. But the idea of using the jet engines and land vehicles continued. Apart from cleaning of the airport, I found a very interesting use of these engines. An Italian company has developed a massive fire extinguisher using jet engines. It's a really interesting design, apart from that there are crazy Americans who integrate jet engines and land vehicles and then race them. But jet powered mine layer vehicles never went into mass production. There are some studies outside the Russian programs and as far as I learned, there have been some studies of the British, but none of them have reached a conclusion in real life. We would really appreciate it if you'd subscribe and follow our content for more exciting facts and videos. As always, the reference link is in the description, and I wish you a good day.